Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will have an overview of vasculitides. Vasculitides are inflammatory disorders of blood vessels that can affect any organ in the body. And presentation of the disease depends on the organs involved. Vasculitis may be a primary condition or it can be secondary to other diseases. For example, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, hepatitis B and C or HIV. Vasculitides are categorized using modified Chapel Hill criteria. It broadly classifies vasculitides into large, medium, small and variable vessel vasculitides. Then there are three other categories which are not based on vessel size but based on organ involved and etiology. These are single organ vasculitis, vasculitides associated with systemic diseases and vasculitides associated with probable etiology. Two diseases affect large blood vessels such as aorta and its branches. These are giant cell arthritis and Takayasu's arteritis. Giant cell arthritis is disease of elderly while suspect Takayasu's if there is large vessel vasculitis in less than 55 year old. Then medium vessel vasculitides include polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki disease. Small vessel vasculitides are subcategorized into antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibody or ANCA associated vasculitis and immune complex associated vasculitis. Small vessel vasculitides which are ANCA associated are microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis with polyangitis previously known as Wegener granulomatosis and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis or schurz ross syndrome. 40 to 60 percent patients with this syndrome are ANCA positive. Then immune complex vasculitides include Good Pastures disease also known as anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease, then cryoglobulinemic vasculitis and IgA vasculitis or also known as inoxon land purpura. Included in variable vessel vasculitides are Bechet's and Kogan syndrome. This picture is a visual illustration of the vasculitides classification based on vessel size as just discussed. Large vessel, medium vessels and small vessel NK associated and small vessel immune complex associated vasculitides. Now some words about last three categories. Single organ vasculitis as the name indicate refers to vasculitis in arteries or veins of any size in a single organ and has no features suggesting that it is limited expression of systemic vasculitis. The involved organ and vessel types should be included in the name. These include primary central nervous system vasculitis, cutaneous small vessel vasculitis, isolated aortitis, etc. Some patients initially diagnosed with single organ vasculitis may develop other disease manifestations warranting re-evaluation for another systemic vasculitis. For example, cutaneous arthritis later becoming polyarthritis nodosa. Next category in classification is vasculitis associated with systemic disease. Subsets of patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, relapsing polychondritis and other systemic rheumatic diseases may develop associated vasculitis. The vasculitic process in this setting most frequently involves small muscular arteries, arterioles and venules. Last category in the classification is vasculitis associated with probable etiology. Some of the vasculitides are associated with specific etiology and the diagnosis should have a prefix specifying the underlying cause. Examples include hepatitis C virus associated cryoglobulinemic vasculitis, hepatitis B virus associated polyarthritis nodosa, syphilis associated aortitis, hydralazine associated ANCA associated vasculitis, and cancer associated vasculitis in which hematologic and solid organ neoplasms as well as clonal B cell lymphoproliferative disorders can be associated with vasculitis. Coming on to clinical features, different vasculitides preferentially affect different organs, causing variable pattern of symptoms. Often there is only overwhelming fatigue with raised ESR and C-reactive protein. Consider vasculitis in any unidentified multisystem disorder. 
If the presentation does not fit clinically or serologically into a specific category, consider malignancy-associated vasculitis. Like already mentioned, clinical features depend on the involved organ. So you will be able to find systemic symptoms like fever, malaise, weight loss, arthralgia or myalgia. Skin involvement may present with purpura, ulcers, libido reticularis, nail bed infarcts or digital gangrene. Eye involvement may lead to episcleritis, scleritis or visual loss. Ear, nose, throat involvement lead to epistaxis, nasal crusting, strider or deafness. If there is pulmonary hemorrhage, the patient may present with hemoptysis and dyspnea. Cardiac involvement may lead to angina or MI. If there is acute involvement of coronary arteries, it may also lead to heart failure and pericarditis. Acute ischemia of gastrointestinal tract may lead to pain or perforation of viscous and in chronic ischemia, it may lead to malabsorption. Renal involvement leads to hypertension, glomerulonephritis and renal failure. Neurological involvement may present with stroke, seizures, chorea, psychosis, confusion, impaired cognition, altered mood. If there is involvement of vasa nervosum, that is the blood vessel supplying blood to the nerves, the patient may develop mononeuritis multiplex or sensory motor polyneuropathy. In genitourinary involvement, the patient may present with orchitis. Coming on to investigations, diagnostic tests include angiography, and or biopsy of involved organ. Other tests which support the diagnosis include raised ESR and CRP. ANCA may be positive, raised creatinine if there is renal failure. Urinalysis may reveal proteinuria, hematuria and casts on microscopy. Now the management. Treatment of large vessel vasculitis is mostly steroids and steroid sparing agents may be added later in the disease course. Medium and small vessel vasculitis are treated through immunosuppression. For this purpose, combination of steroids and another immunosuppressant, for example, cyclophosphamide in severe cases may be used. And in other cases, depending on the features, methotrexate or azathioprine can also be used. Please note that a severe vasculitic flare is a medical emergency. If this is suspected, seek urgent help as organ damage may occur rapidly, like critical renal failure in less than 24 hours. And that's all for this video. I hope you liked this video. If so, please share with your colleagues and subscribe to this channel.